Eight years ago, I was drawn to the mysterious Amazon and made a documentary about a tribe defending their ancestral territory against oil companies. Enticed by the mystery of ancient knowledge, I'm returning eight years later with my new family to meet some of the keepers of the knowledge, the medicine men, the tribal shaman. I'd heard about a sacred vine called ayahuasca, which enabled the shaman to have visions of the future and communicate with the spirit world and the natural kingdom. I knew that historically, altered states of consciousness have been an integral part of many cultures, and in tribal societies, these states have often been induced by taking hallucinogenic plants, with the shaman acting as the spiritual guide. I was curious as to why the United Nations had outlawed ayahuasca, and I wanted to experience the ayahuasca ritual and gain insights into the shaman's world. My journey would lead me head on into the global war on drugs. Every society chooses a small number of substances, no matter how toxic, and enshrines them in its cultural values, then demonizes all other substances, and then persecutes and launches witch hunts against those users. I am thrust into life-threatening situations between worlds of opposing values. And I experienced realities I never even dreamed of. Ecuador lies on the equator, on the western side of the Amazon basin. We touch down in the capital, Quito, which is nestled amongst volcanoes high in the Andes Mountains. This trip into the Amazon was set to be more challenging than my last. This time, I had Jasmine, my one-year-old daughter, and my wife, Willow, who was six months pregnant, travelling with me. I've always believed that the Amazon is the wildest place on Earth, and I had to see it for myself. Half of Ecuador's population is indigenous, and there are 12 distinct language groups, as well as some uncontacted tribes. With its diverse climates ranging from snow-capped mountains to lowland Amazon rainforest, Ecuador is one of the most biologically and culturally diverse countries on Earth. Ecuador has a long history of hallucinogenic plant use, with the San Pedro mescaline cactus in the mountains and the ayahuasca brew in the Amazon. We were warned that the road leading down to the Amazon was perilous, and a year before, a bus went off the edge, killing everyone on board. Eight years earlier, while filming the Warani Indians cutting a demarcation line around their territory, I met Flavio. Flavio is a shaman and a warrior, fighting hard to preserve his land and way of life from the oil companies, the colonists and the encroaching outside world. Flavio 
Flavio's father, Raphael, is a Shwa warrior and an ayahuasquero shaman. They've organised workshops on their community where the local shamans share their culture and knowledge with the youth. Raphael is determined to pass on his ancestors' culture, knowledge and land to his children. The shamans are the spiritual guides and the medicine men of the tribe who have vast knowledge of the jungle plants and their medicinal uses. Por qué es ayahuasca importante para usted? Ayahuasca es de, de nuestros abuelos cuando ellos tomaban para tener visión espiritual de la selva, del río, eh, también de la lluvia, de los cerros. Este con, con, eh, contiene de que este es bueno para salud de, de un chamanismo, control del chamanismo y, y tener más energía para el chamán y para controlar toda la selva. Entonces la boa es un chamán, el tigre es un chamán, espiritualmente. Todo animal contiene a este espíritu de ayahuasca. Este vamos a llevar un poco para entrecambiar el visión porque este es otro ayahuasca y también este es otro. Este viaje espiritualmente el suelo conecta con ayahuasca, con otra ayahuasca. Entonces por eso... Hace una visión más, más fuerte. Sin esto no tienes visión, no le ves bien. Pero con esto sí tienes visión. Puedes mirar. O, bueno, así. Espiritual. Selva. La medicina de montaña. Ah, diferente. Este puede tomar también. No, no, ya, ya, ya. O sea, puede tomar también. El que seguía tomando. ¿no? Este no es eh, difícil tomar, solo yacha, sino también cualquiera puede tomar. ¿No? Se pone estas hojas primero para que este vaya adentro. Entonces, yaje, hojas de yaje, está ahí. Y este es ayahuasca. Pablo Amaringo es also an ayahuasquero shaman who paints the visions he's had during ayahuasca rituals. This painting represents the two plants necessary in preparing the ayahuasca brew. Out of the ayahuasca vine comes a black snake with a yellow aura. There is another snake called the chacruna snake, which penetrates the ayahuasca snake, producing the visionary effects of these two magic plants. In this vision, a defeated king from a remote tribe in Peru rises from his grave to tell his shocked wife that he has grown a vine from his hair, which is to be called ayahuasca, meaning vine of the dead. He said you must mix this vine with the chacruna plant, which will allow you to see sound, to have visions, and develop your psychic abilities and acquire deep knowledge from past cultures. In scientific terms, the ayahuasca brew consists of two main active ingredients, beta-carboline from the ayahuasca vine and the extremely powerful dimethyltryptamine, or DMT, from the psychotria or chacruna plants. Normally DMT is destroyed in the gut, but you take it in combo with beta-carboline and then it's active. This was discovered by Amazonian Indians millennia ago and not discovered by Western science till 1956. During my research for this journey, I met author and ethnobotanist Terence McKenna. Terence was so inspired by his spiritual adventures with these Amazon shamans over the last 30 years, he wrote several books on his experiences and philosophies. He became a world-renowned speaker, advocate and expert on plant-based hallucinogens 
and shamanic rituals. A shamanism is about going into the realms of death, transcending the body, transcending space and time. What the psychedelics do is they dissolve boundaries. They dissolve the illusion of separateness. Raphael invited us to an overnight ayahuasca ritual at a sacred site in his ancestral territory, deep in the headwaters of the Amazon. Willow didn't want to drink ayahuasca because of her pregnancy, but she still wanted to come for the adventure. The wildness, the sense of mystery and intrigue was enough to capture me. It was a journey into myself to discover my personal boundaries. I had no idea of the extent of the challenges that lay before me. I felt enormously protective. Yo vine primero y vi pisada de tigre, tigre de la laguna. Tigre, hemos medido este este tamaño de aquí pisada acá. Cabeza tigres. Tigre muy grande. Tigre embarazada. <laughs> Tigre embarazada. <laughs> we just saw a jaguar prince and apparently it swims in the river and eats children. <laughs> so we're traveling in the jungle with a baby. Calle Picaflor por esa atarraya de araña. Entonces calle aquí en Reda, este sale y come para que en Reda y pague el come. Ya. We've just um, done a three and a half hour walk through mud. <laughs> and um, I'm seven months uh, pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and I've still got three and a half hours to walk. We've been told to be very careful of snakes because there's apparently a lot of them around here. And they were going to build a plastic house, but we asked them to build a house out of palm bill. And so it looks like we're going to have a traditional hut made in a very, very short time. I felt how my modern lifestyle had allowed a sort of separation to develop between myself and nature. Through their actions, I could see how these forest Indians were still directly connected with the natural environment. I felt like I had journeyed back in time. I felt privileged to be able to participate in this ancient ritual. A los jóvenes que no estuvieron en la escuela, que no aprendieron la escuela, a ellos le daban consejo, a ellos le daban de tomar ayahuasca siempre. No es droga, sino es para conocer eh, visión. I knew that drinking ayahuasca could be a very intense experience, that it tasted foul and often it made you vomit. I was feeling apprehensive about how it would affect me. Millions of people take ayahuasca in the Amazon. It is the largest psychedelic religion on earth. The waking world and the world of the dream become one. So then it becomes the function of the shaman, the gadfly, the go-between, to carry information back and forth between these worlds. Yeah. Everything sounds really loud and alive. It feels like the whole forest and everything in it is aware that we're here drinking ayahuasca. 
I'm seeing iridescent rainbow spirals and complex geometric patterns. Feels like I'm being bombarded by some sort of ancient knowledge, universal consciousness that I don't understand. También eh, a veces cuando no está viendo o le matan a otra persona, entonces se toma, le ve cuál persona se mató. Entonces conocemos ¿no? espiritualmente. Yeah. Entonces, los chamanes entre los yachas, ellos, ellos peleaban bastante cuando tenían en, en, en amistad, cuando a, a un hijo le mató otro yacha y el otro le mató también, entonces tienen enemigos. Entonces, ahí son los que ponen la flecha, ¿no? Paga al otro, paga al otro. Entonces, así es la flecha. Eso puede llegar muy lejos las flechas. Mm. Ya, son espirituales mente que, que caminan entre medio de los espíritus de de distintas clases de espirituales que existen en, en la selva, ¿no? Insecto, va, sapo, puede ir la culebra, puede ir, puede ir la boa, puede ir, puede volar chimbilaco, puede estar volando ahorita a miles de kilómetros un minuto, chimbilaco, ¿no? Entonces, esos son los espirituales que es del chamanismo. Mm -hmm. <risa> yeah. Es complicado, ¿no? Yeah, muy, muy fuerte del yachax. Es yeah. posible uh, entrar otro mundo. ¿sí? Ya, yeah, posible entrar en cascada, puede trasladar a otros lugares en minutos yeah. con eso. Ayahuasca nos enseña, nos enseña a amar a toda una cosmo, cosmología indígena, eh, a Malulla, a Maquilla, a Mashua, no robar, no mentir, no ser ocioso, vivir cuidando la naturaleza, siempre nosotros y nuestros hijos. Ayahuasca nos enseña amar a la, a la naturaleza, sino ver la es, espiritualidad de la tierra para ver el, el Pachamama y el espacio. In many countries around the world, people are now running their own unique style of ayahuasca rituals to open a doorway into this shamanic world. What you see, I think, is the morphogenetic field, the invisible world that holds everything together. You don't have to spend 20 years around the ashram. Ayahuasca to me is a very, very feminine spirit. It's a feminine experience. It's an experience of, of let go, of surrender, of nurturing, of love, of light, of the heart. It's a holographic library speaks to you in visions, it communicates through pictures, and also you're very sensitive to sound in ayahuasca. Sound can influence wherever you go, so we use sound as a navigator also. You use your intent and you use sound. Ayahuasca can be seen as a doorway, a link between the dimensions. It can give you all kinds of let's say shamanic information it can give you a look into the animal world the spirit world the, the world of insects the world of plants the world of minerals the galactic world the cosmic perspective and ayahuasca is like a deep immersion into that kind of experiential understanding of unity and this unity is liberating it's a transforming experience Ayahuasca teaches that we are it, we are nature, we are not separate from it. Estamos juntos con esa visión. Entonces, esa visión nos da poder, nos da esa energía, ese, ese más fuerza. Entonces nos da poder para vivir más tiempo. 
ayer bebimos ayahuasca. En eso vi una visión muy profunda. Un árbol se transformaba en forma de, de una vena. Pero en la mitad, este árbol grande tenía unos dientes. Y que estaba sonriendo. Y después de sonreír, soplaba un viento fuerte tipo huracán. Al sur y al norte. Eso significaba de que todavía está esta selva lleno de espíritu. Todo eso era de nuestros abuelos. Como vino el colono, colonización, el, el gobierno obligó a la gente que sea retasados por sus puestos. Pero antiguamente todo esto era global de los indígenas. The Amazon Indians have lost more than their claim to ancestral lands. Military-backed oil companies have pushed roads through their territory and their land is being invaded by colonists and outsiders. Their culture is undergoing massive upheavals and the people look to their shamans for vision and guidance in these rapidly changing times. Bueno, yo no quiero petróleo porque está contaminando mucho a la Amazonía, por eso no queremos que, eh, que le vemos que esta montaña era puro aves y monos, ahora le vemos solo las casas y los carros, entonces por eso este pueblo indígena no necesita petróleo y nos termina todos los ríos y todos los peces, entonces eso por eso nosotros estamos aquí eh, queriendo defender nuestra Amazonía ecuatoriana, ¿para qué? Para que nuestros hijos, futura generación, vivan mejor. As threats to the Amazon people change with the times, the shamans use ayahuasca to gain insights and strategies to fight new enemies. Por eso ahora estamos acá en una selva bebiendo ayahuasca para ver más visiones, coger más espíritu para poder luchar y defender territorios contra las petroleras. Bebían los abuelos para la guerra, para ver dónde estaba el enemigo y se mataban entre pueblos. A una guerra psicológica también bebían para guerra psicológica. Ahora ya no queremos hacer guerra para violencia bebiendo ayahuasca. Queremos ver al gobierno si nos está mintiendo o si nos está hablando la verdad. Pues por la blockade now. There's a lot of military going through here and uh got the indigenous people being held up by the military. Yo puedo morir contra los petroleros. Yo daré vida por mi territorio. Mi territorio de lo que mi abuelo me dejó de herencia yo nunca rendiré cuando nosotros nos enojamos nos enojamos y nadie no nos para y no nos parará nadie ni militares, no los misioneros nadie, ni el gobierno nacional moriremos juntos la naturaleza ¿por qué quiero matar a usted? No. Sí, yo me quería matar ¿por qué? Por, por haber yo atajado a Tripetrol, a Arco, entonces ese, ese hermano es que trabaja con petroleros, entonces por eso me quieren matar a mí. Sí. Ya. Quieren ver muerto para que ellos fácilmente traer petroleros. ¡Y puto! ¿Sí? ¡Deme la carabina o deme la flecha ahorita, carajo! Vamos a tomar este, ayahuasca para tener visión, para conocer eh, malos, malos espíritus, para conocer la familia, cómo va a estar la familia y dar mucho de, de salud y ahora que está la compañía. Por eso vamos a controlar qué, qué tiempo vamos a estar bien y qué tiempo no vamos a estar bien. ¿no? Mm. 
I'm convinced that in its native setting, ayahuasca is a telepathic drug. I mean, small groups of tribal people are taking this thing and making group decisions based on group hallucinations based on the collective database of the tribal group. They're seeing the information from a higher dimensional space. On this ayahuasca journey, I was given deeper insights into the shaman's world and their intimate relationship with nature. I saw how the shamans, through their visions, were able to communicate with the planet as if it were a conscious living entity. Spiritualmente, el Sangai era el, el ojo de la Amazonía. Es un volcán que mantiene toda la Amazonía. Está peligrando en caso de que acabe sacar eh, petróleo, eh, va a erupcionar el eh, eh, Sangai. In 1971, largely in response to the popularization of psychedelics in the United States in the 60s, such as LSD, magic mushrooms and marijuana, the United Nations drafted the Narcotics Convention, which was signed by all of its members, prohibiting hallucinogenic plants and chemicals. Without any real scientific research, DMT and other hallucinogens were placed in the Schedule 1 category, along with heroin and cocaine. Dealers in these substances face between seven years and life in prison, and in some countries, even death. Except in Brazil and Peru, ayahuasca rituals are now banned in every United Nations country on Earth. In Brazil, 80 years ago, an Amazonian shaman introduced rubber tapper Romando Sierra to ayahuasca. Romando became a shamanic healer and later established the Santa Daimi religion, which is an unusual combination of Christianity, ayahuasca rituals and nature worship. Today, the Santa Daimi church has over 15,000 members in Brazil and many centres around the world. The Netherlands is a signatory to the Narcotics Convention and in October 1999, the government raided a Santa Daimi service with 70 people in the congregation and arrested the two spiritual leaders. I went to the Netherlands to meet Brazilian Yatra Silveira de Barbosa, who established a number of Santa Daimi centers in Europe. In my country it is legal. Ayahuasca in South America is, is being taken in the same way, ritualistic way for healing, for you know, spirit, spirituality. Yeah, back to 500 uh, years before Christ that we know as a fact. I cannot understand this way of thinking you're going to jail for 7 years or 15 years because you, you are running a ritual, it's just too much. <laughs> so this is going to be our first ritual with our doors closed. So there is a risk that the police might come here. The doors downstairs are totally locked. It's like you put the lights on. Everything that's in the darkness will show up and you can work with that. So actually makes you uh, closer to yourself. It brings you in contact with God within you. It uh, brings you back into your heart space. It's impossible to use as a recreational, first because you throw up like crazy, you know, I mean, if you, uh, you don't really enjoy every moment. It's not something that you take and you go to a party because when you drink ayahuasca, you really come in touch with your innermost and it's not all the time flowers. There is a lot of thorns. We've been healing people of uh, physical diseases like cancer, or psychosomatic diseases, depressions, drug addiction, heroin, cocaine. I want to be free, so free, like a flower in a bee. Like I've been addicted to cocaine and heroin since I was 16 and went through many, many different treatment programs and none of them worked. Basically, it just helped me go inside myself and look at why I was using. People need to know about it. 
and it needs to be legal. It needs to be able to go on and happen because without it, I would be dead right now. And I know many, many more people would be dead right now. We understand the problem and, you know, it's not a case to send people to jail, but to send people into treatment. The Narcotics Convention also banned virtually all scientific research into psychedelics and their possible clinical applications. Before the ban, some psychologists, such as author Stanislav Groff, were using psychedelics as a therapeutic tool, accessing deeper levels of consciousness to unlock traumas with very positive results. I think it's a great tragedy of 20th century science that the original excitement about exploring consciousness and mental illness generated by the discovery of LSD gave way to establishment paranoia and, uh, and uh, repression of drug-using populations. Drugs might actually cause people to wake up to some of the, of the abuses and scams that were being run by late modernism and uh, capitalism. We are supposed to live in a narrow canyon of consciousness, walled in between awake and asleep. Dharm Square in Amsterdam, site of many protests, and the protest behind me is one to try and get ayahuasca legalised. We have the right to choose who we are. We have the right to choose our gods, and we have the right to be. Viva Ayahuasca! As we enter the new millennium, we shouldn't have to be dealing with uh, religious and spiritual persecution. Something we should have left behind in the Dark Ages, but unfortunately, the Dark Ages are still with us, so we have to make a stand. We have fundamental law, and we have also uh, the European Convention on Human Rights, which says that people have uh, liberty to have freedom of uh, religion and we have seen this also in the United States where they gave the freedom to the Native American church to use the payot cactus. In my country in Brazil we had uh, the same thing happened in a case that lasted for eight years uh, but not a case as the police, the investigators were scientists, anthropologists, doctors and uh, it, after eight years, we won the jury by unanimity. So they took ayahuasca out of the opium law. And we want to have the same here, because we really have the right to have our own religion. There is a lot of international pressure on the Dutch government to uh, conform in the uh, uh, drug policy with the other European countries and the United States. The big war on drugs. Due to the war on drugs, in America alone, there are currently three quarters of a million people spending around five million years behind bars, costing over 60 billion US dollars. America spends more on its prisons than it does on its schools. The so-called war on drugs, which is really a war against other people's values. It's a continuation of cultural genocide and all the other efforts made by the phenomenal success of capitalism to shove its agenda down other people's throats. People's uh, minds, like their bodies, must be a domain free from government control. It is a civil rights issue. This psychedelic dimension is part of the human birthright. No plant should be illegal. These things should not even be talked about as drugs. The big drug and biotech companies have been sending their bio pirates to the Amazon for years to steal and patent shamanic medicinal knowledge. And in 1988, a variety of ayahuasca was patented. 
The patent was challenged by a coalition of Amazon tribes. The Supreme Court ruled that you can't patent a plant, that a plant is not an invention. One of the active ingredients in the ayahuasca brew, DMT, is found in many species of plants throughout the world. In the Amazon, shamans have used DMT in their snuff rituals for thousands of years. The shamans derive the DMT from the hakula beans and the virola tree and absorb it through the nasal passages. The snuff is used to induce a trance, to see visions, to communicate with the spirit world and drive away evil spirits. There is an ancient Amazon legend about DMT which says in the beginning the sun created various beings to serve as intermediaries between him and earth and created the DMT snuff powder so that man could contact these supernatural beings. The national symbol of Australia is the wattle. It's an acacia. The acacia ecology of Australia is jammed with DMT. And then, of course, the question was, well, do the aboriginals know about this? I ask Paul Dillon from the Australian National Drug and Alcohol Research Centre about the dangers of DMT and other hallucinogens. We did a call out to DMT users, asking them for their experiences. Interestingly, every single caller we had um, emphasised that it was a drug that they were not going to use again. They found it very intense, quite unpleasant, and they really weren't prepared for the experience at all. The most harmful drugs in society are definitely the legal ones, alcohol and tobacco. Tobacco kills almost 20,000 Australians every year, and, and uh, alcohol is up around the 4,000. And the hallucinogen drugs, none to my knowledge. But uh, I suppose they're drugs that uh, we do need to know more about. We need to know about the psychological effects. I think more research needs to be done. The only legal scientific research into psychedelics and DMT since the Narcotics Convention was conducted by psychologist Dr Rick Straussman in New Mexico in 1990. He concludes, amongst other things, that DMT is naturally released from the pineal gland during birth, death and other naturally occurring psychedelic states. The strongest drugs are the ones most like ordinary brain chemistry. The most extreme case being DMT. DMT only lasts seven to ten minutes, and yet it's the most profound dislocation of reality that you can undergo. a lot about psychedelics before I encountered DMT and it showed me that I knew virtually nothing. And I took three, four very large inhalations. My impression was of falling forward through some kind of tube that was fluctuating. This space was filled with beings, entities of some sort, creatures made of light, and they were jumping in and out of my chest. And I thought I must have died, that this couldn't happen to somebody and come back. You cannot go further than this into the bardo and return. The shaman is someone who has seen the beginning and the end. It's the most challenging, enlightening, astonishing, terrifying, joyous, strange thing in the world. 
I don't mean to scare anyone off, but these are bizarre dimensions of extraordinary power and beauty. People should be very careful. The shaman offers an immense example of courage. While I was making this film, Terence was diagnosed with terminal cancer. I asked if he had one message to share from all his experiences, what would it be? Sheer curiosity is uh, the thing that I've always let carry me along and uh, I have no regrets about any of this. Uh, I, I think it's worth the life to uh, put these issues in front of people. Willow was now nearly eight months pregnant and suffering from dizzy spells and headaches. So we searched out a shaman named Enrique, who lived by the Amazon River, who we heard used ayahuasca mainly as a tool to heal people. Enrique and his family have established an indigenous foundation to help preserve his ancestral territory. Part of the finances needed to run the foundation he gets from offering ayahuasca rituals for eco-tourists. Doctor Ecuador, Blanco, ya aquí en Puyo, ya conocen al chamán. Por eso cuando no puede con las indicciones, mm. el chamán vaya nomás a hacer limpiar la corteza para cuando está con gripe. Yeah. Gripe. Yeah. Para eso es este, absorber. Ah. Sale toda la maleta. Sí, sí, yeah. sí. Mejor. Sí. Yeah. Contra snake, la papa se raspa, se con agua tibia se toma cuando pica snake. Esto es ayahuasca. Sí, ayahuasca. Sí. Todo el tiempo en Ecuador es legal para curar. Pero otra persona particular como hobby, eso no, porque es una cosa que tiene que hacer ritual y todo por medio de un chamán. Uh -huh. Sí, no, no es legal. Uh -huh. Otros gringos tomar ayahuasca en otros países es bien o mal. Bien. Bien. Quiere saber costumbre que sabemos tomar amazónico, chamán. Entonces, el otro país quiere tomar para mirar futuros y visiones. Nada más eso quieren ellos también. Usually the shaman and the patient will drink ayahuasca. Para mirar para curar que está el chamanismo que ha hecho mal, para mirar. Cuando es de farmacia, enfermedad, nada, no asoma. Ahí está alumbrando, se ha hecho chamán otros. Entonces eso se saca. Entonces el enfermo va a sanar. felt like he was sucking up blockages and negativity and stuff and just sucked it out of my crown. It was like an auric cleanse. I feel like he can read the internal aspects of my body. He can read my body like a book. It was like he had all of his lineage there working through the sounds he was making. Antes no había ni doctores, ni farmacia, nada. Este Amazonas no conocían nadie. Solamente con este ayahuasca, el chamán seguía curando. Quiero aprender 
shamanismo cuando usted hizo un joven? Y ahí recién ese chamán que me curó, en edad de 12 años, me picó culebra. Entonces ahí yo, para hasta ahora poderoso, yo aprendí. El chamán me dijo, mi poder quiere a este joven, plazo, un año en dieta yo, solamente aplastado banana. Cuando él está drogado con este líquido, directamente está hablando con el espíritu. Yeah. Y por este intermedio de espíritu, tiene el poder el chamán. Mm. Pero en el agua también. He entrado yo como anaconda. Mm. También mirado como llamar un grande. En anaconda he hecho rueda y yo ahí mm. sentado. Mm. Si llama quiere hacer daño, ellos por acá, por acá también. Mm. Ya, ellos son guardianes. I felt that when these shamanic plants were used with the correct preparation, guidance and ritual, they could be powerful tools for healing and personal transformation. Sin luz yo puedo mirar, este es sin luz, yo puedo mirar que tiene usted, pero con la luz no puedo. Ok, sin luz. I didn't take any ayahuasca, but I, I had a healing from, from him. I've been having a lot of movement and a lot of pain and, and a lot of faintness. And he said that um, I need lots of minerals and vitamins. I wanted to see if this baby is a boy or a girl. And uh, he says it's definitely a boy. En tu columna y esto central, este anevas también. Sí, anevas para sitio dentro de esto. Para eso. After returning to Australia, we all became quite sick. We tested positive for amoebas and parasites. I also spent four days in hospital, unable to walk due to a problem in my spine. Oh yeah, and we did have a baby boy. We named him Shaman. In Ecuador. Thousands of people were evacuated as a number of volcanoes began to violently erupt. Hace tiempo es cuando primero erupción de Pichincha, Guava Pichincha, estaba tomando con unos quiteños ayahuasca. Hemos estado conversando en visión cuando este volcán está sagradamente, cuando petroleros están molestando, está está ca está cabreado porque este petrolero está reventando su suelo adentro entonces eh, el volcán está cabreado porque no están portando bien la naturaleza no quiero que me vengan a destruir gentes de Estados Unidos por chupar la sangre de nuestros ancestros el oro negro que se creen con la tecnología de puntas hecho los inteligentes no. Aquí estamos los inteligentes, los que defendemos el pulmón del mundo, la selva, el aire puro, el agua puro. What it brings is a, an empathy to the destruction of the planet. You, you know, the cutting of a rainforest is suddenly no longer completely abstract. It's actually something you can feel and relate to. And all political change begins with a change of feeling and value. We have become a toxic force in planetary biology. There is going to have to be a radical transformation. Human future will be designed on how conscious we are able to make ourselves. If we can change our minds, we can take hold of this process and halt it. Y convoco a todos los yachaks, a todos los chamanes del mundo, unificar para difundir en el mundo y decir, no destruir la naturaleza, no destruir las raíces de los árboles. 
My journey into this mysterious world of the shamans of the Amazon lasted three years. I'm left wondering whose interests are really being served by keeping illegal these shamanic plants that can help you connect with yourself and the natural world. And how is it that humanity is allowing such unprecedented destruction of nature? Meeting the shamans and taking ayahuasca opened me to a world I never imagined. A world that challenged my current concepts of reality and made me question my life's purpose and my relationship with everything. El materialismo está terminando nuestro mundo. Nuestro mundo es el espíritu de los árboles, de las hojas mágicas. <laughs> 